so on the way there, we're talking. He goes, by the way, we're about to cast some demons out of, out of a guy. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, all right, let's go. But of course, at this point, I had never really cast any demons out of anybody. So I had, so when the demons manifest and they begin to get cast out, then immediately the way that the team was leading them through deliverance, they were immediately bringing healing into the situations that had allowed the demons to come in. And it was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever been a part of. I was hooked. You know, I, I don't understand it all. I don't have all the theological answers. Yeah. But I know what just happened, and it was real. Yes. And it was beautiful. And this is the kind of freedom that I see Jesus giving people in the Bible. Right. It depends on the situation that it's in. A lot of times demons are just trying to interrupt and get attention. And of course, we never want to give them that. And the church has not taught on this. Yeah, yeah. And they have not. So that's why people don't understand it. Welcome to the That Guy in Cambodia podcast. If you had asked me 10 years ago if I believed in the demonic, I would have told you something like, sure, I believe in it, but I've never really experienced it myself. Six years in Cambodia has definitely changed that. Today's episode, I'm interviewing Ben, who does deliverance ministry in the USA as well as around the world. He went from not understanding anything about the demonic to having demons cast out of him and learning to cast demons out of other people. If this is new for you anyway, like it was for me, I would highly recommend checking out Michael Heiser's The Unseen Realm. You can also check out Michael Heiser's YouTube videos. He has one specifically on the demonic and understanding that from a biblical world view using the Bible to really, truly understand what is going on in the spiritual realities that surround us. What verse would you like to start with? I want to do Mark chapter 7. All right. Verses 25 through 30. Go for it. Uh, it says, For a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. And this woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, but yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, for this saying, go your way, the demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out of her daughter and lying on the bed. So explain what that means to you. I so love that verse too. I also, uh, well, I struggled with this scripture for a very long time because I always thought that's a very rude thing for Jesus to say to somebody. Right, It right. seemed like uh, he was calling uh, this woman a dog. Yeah. Um, but what he's really saying here is that that deliverance belongs to God's children. Mm. That deliverance is the children's bread. And so he was telling her that I cannot give you what you're asking for because you're not one of mine. Interesting. So, wow, that's that's wow, that's really deep. So this is a scripture that we understand at our ministry of why we do deliverance on believers. Because Jesus says that deliverance belongs to believers. And once the woman proved that she was a believer in Jesus, he says, now I can give you what you're asking for me. Wow, that is really powerful. How did you get from your original interpretation to that? That's powerful. Um, I think it was just being around deliverance as long as I was and as long as I've been and like just pressing into it and hearing other people kind of expound on these things. It just... the yeah. Honestly, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like when Jesus told Peter that flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, only my Father in heaven, I think it had to come from him. That, yeah. That that's, what that, that that's what that meant. That's so cool. Well, I remember being really excited yesterday when we were sitting around the table and you were telling me about how you were in ministry for years, I think six years or mm -hmm. something, and then it wasn't until you experienced deliverance that it was like night and day. Mm -hmm. And I could see the light in your eyes, I could see that that was such a real experience for you. Tell us what happened. Well, so I'll just share my, so how I got to, Please to do. understand deliverance. Um, so I, I was ordained as a pastor in 2016. Um, and so I'd been operating in ministry for quite a few years. I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'd operated in the gifts of the Spirit. I spoke in tongues. I see, uh, you know, gave words of knowledge, had seen healings happen, prayed for the sick, all the, done all these things. Um, but I had some things in my life that it, I, I noticed that it just seemed like I could never get victory over. Yeah. And I was struggling to understand why, why is this? And I th started to think, well, maybe it's just because it's who I am. 
maybe these maybe these personality defects that I have where I just seem to can't control anger in my marriage and I would just get angry at my wife and say things and then I'd sit there and think where did that come from yeah um that's not what a pastor or godly man should be saying or or doing um and so things like that you know that I just no matter how hard I prayed about it it was never gone and uh, I couldn't seem to get victory over it and I so I started to just think that was just part of who I was um so but then so fast forward some time um one day I was in Tennessee and we were going to church uh at the well and uh, my, uh, uh, the, actually the pastor that's over our ministry that I work for said, Hey, I want you to come and help me pray for somebody today. So I said, okay. So on the way there, we're talking, he goes, by the way, we're about to cast some demons out of, out of a guy. And I'm like, Oh wow. Okay. All right, let's go. But of course, at this point I had never really cast any demons out of anybody. So I had in my mind thought it's going to be like some, I don't know, I guess I thought it was going to be a homeless guy, like probably just out of his mind. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like Legion. Yeah, you know, somebody that was just really, really, uh, you know, manifesting in a crazy way and just, you know, yeah, like uh, the guy in the tombs or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, when I get to the church and we walk inside, it's, uh, it's somebody I know and it's one, somebody on our staff at our ministry. Wow. And so I'm thinking, well, this is very strange. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just said, okay, Lord, um, I trust the man that brought me here. Um, so I'm just going to sit here and see what happens and trust you and then just experience this and not judge it. So, so I began to watch and, and just be a part of it. And of course I prayed as, and, and, you know, through it as support and I began to watch um, demons manifest in this man that I knew very well. And I'd heard him preach before and he was a powerful preacher, powerful man of God. And so it was very kind of it was very awesome, but yet very hard at the same time yeah. to see this happening. Um, but then I begin to see. So when the demons manifest and they begin to get cast out, then immediately the way that the team was leading them through deliverance, they were immediately bringing healing into the situations that had allowed the demons to come in. So this man had a lot okay. of traumatic experiences in his life. One was actually he had um, rolled over on his daughter and uh, when she was an infant and killed her. She had suffocated mm. to death. And so um, that was a very traumatic event yeah. for him. And demons came in through that. And But when the demons left, then Jesus came into that moment. They was able to take him into that moment and say, do you see Jesus there? And he saw him. He said, now let him heal that moment that, that happened. And, and it was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever been a part of to see the freedom that he got. And I, and I think after that was over, I was hooked. I, yeah. I was like, this is, this is amazing. I, I don't understand it all. I don't have all the theological answers. Yeah. But I know what just happened, and it was real. Yes. And it was beautiful. And this is the kind of freedom that I see Jesus giving people in the Bible. And so I wanted to press in. So from that day on, I began to press in to understand it more and more. Mm-hmm. So good. So how long was it afterwards until you had experienced that for yourself? So I guess it was close, almost two years. Yeah. Did, did um, you believe that you could experience that for yourself? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think I got so focused on the power of it for others yeah. that I wasn't looking at myself and needing it, but I wanted to do it for others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then as I began to do that, I began to see that there were things that I needed deliverance from yeah yeah and it's where i began to piece together okay as, as after i'd done or sent in on enough deliverance i've seen other people in ministry that had the same uh, sort of issues that i was dealing with wow and they get delivered and then it started making sense to me thinking you know what i think i need to do this wow too. so good so i eventually did and i actually had four demons cast out of me that's wild and uh it was very it was very wild it was a very um very theological challenging um thing for me to accept because i knew i was saved right people are going to hear this podcast and they're going to say well there's no way you were never really saved if you had four demons well i i respect you and your opinion but i know i was saved i know i was filled with the holy spirit yeah i know i was preaching the word of god i know i heard the voice of god um but I also had was demonized. 
Um, but one thing I want to say is that we don't ever use the word possessed by demons. Right, right. Because that would, um, that would imply like full control, right? It, or what, it, what, why not? Kind of that, yeah. Uh, and also it's a term that would imply ownership. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's and, right. And uh, demons don't own anybody. They don't even own unbelievers. God owns everybody. Wow. God's creator of all men. Okay. Um, so demons don't own anybody, but they do demonize people. And actually, the, it's the King James translated it possessed, but I, that's a bad translation. I've heard because about that. Yeah, it's demonize is actually the word of a of a demon exercising influence over, and that's what they do. Yeah, that is actually. So then, I guess the next question, logically, for people who are thinking along that lines, would be then, why the heck can a demon? get into a Christian. So obviously there's levels of demonization. Mm -hmm. um, and a person who is an unbeliever can is going to probably be more highly demonized and more controlled, if you want to say, yeah, by a yeah. demon than a Christian is. But um, a lot of the times what we deal with in deliverance in our ministry is with Christians is stuff that it was already there before they were saved. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like these other parts that Jesus has won the battle over, Correct. but they need to be taken from the enemy. Yes. And the church has not taught on this. Yeah, yeah. And they have not. So that's why people don't understand it. Christians can come from backgrounds of ancestry where just about every ancestry has demonic gods that they worshiped at some point. Yeah, I noticed that I was lo looking through your deliverance guide and it was just like going by regions. Correct. I thought that was really powerful because it is so true that. I can really sense a difference, which I couldn't before, you know, five, six years ago, I yeah. wouldn't be able to, but I can definitely sense a spiritual difference, Cambodia versus the States. Correct. Because it's the principality and the spirits that are ruling over those areas. Just keep going with this because this is, this is gold and this is what I really think a lot of believers need to be armed with. So let's just, let's just use some examples, for example, of some common deliverances we deal with. So maybe a person comes in, you know, a believer comes in and um, they, they're demonized and um, we confront the demon and um, we find out that the person was uh, sexually molested when they were a child. Right. Okay. But yet they got saved when they were 22 years old and now they're 28, say. Well, yes, they got saved, okay? And this is not an issue of salvation. It has nothing to do with their relationship with, with, with whether they have a relationship with God or they don't. Um, the, the demonization happened when, the, when that traumatic thing happened, okay? So, so when they get saved, Jesus comes in and he saves them and forgives them of their sin. But if they don't understand things about the courtrooms of heaven, this is a real thing, okay? Yeah. The, the Christians need to understand that God operates in a system of government that he created. Um, the Word of God says that when Jesus came to earth, the government would be on his shoulders. People thought that meant the earthly government. No, it was God's government it was mm. on his shoulders. Um, wow. We have courtrooms. Be everything that in the, on earth exists because it existed in the spiritual realm before he did here. It's a replica. Uh, we have courtrooms because there's courtrooms in heaven. The Bible says there is. Mm -hmm. um, so and that's the accuser correct. is there day and night, that's exactly right? right. We Accusing. even see this in Job where uh, it says that the sons of God came before God. And, yep. and those sons of God are obviously the, the angels, the angelic beings, good one, you know, the, the, the good angels and the demonic angels. Uh, would stand before God, and um, and that's in the courtroom of heaven, and they're presenting things before God, and and Satan actually says to God, "What about this man Job?" So yeah. it's like a courtroom, and he's bringing something before God. So I don't even have time to go into all that, right, today, right, right. But, but that's that's a reference for what we're helpful. talking about. Have you ever read The Unseen Realm by I, Michael I Heiser? Have. Yes. I feel like that was something that was an introduction to me. Yes. Do you have any other resources or places you could refer people to if they want to understand more of this? Um, I would say that there's there's a lady named Anna Mendez Farrell. Okay. Um, I would watch a lot of her teachings. Um, she has some um, some teachings about. She was a very high ranking witch. Oh, and she got saved. So she and knows she about was this stuff. fully delivered from all sorts of demons, like literally hundreds. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, and so 
she, yeah, she. I would just watch her because she can. Break, she's. It's very good because she's telling you from the other side. Exactly. She used to put demons in people and like curse people, and now she's fully uh, preaches for Jesus and saved. And so she understands the tactics of the enemy from that side. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, continue on. Sorry, I interrupted um, you. So so yeah. So I want I want to make it clear that we're not talking about. That, that salvation is not the issue or the forgiveness of sins or the up, upright position with man vertically with God. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is, is the church has not taught about renouncing. That's really, wow, good. I mean, the Catholic church does. If you ever watch a Catholic baptism, they say, do you renounce the works of Satan? Oh, interesting. But for some reason, Protestant Christianity hasn't done, has lost this. Wow. Um, but every other religion, if you if you look at all the other religions, they all have you renounce anything else that you were in before you joined their religion. Interesting. Because even the false religions that are actually created by demons right, to right. deceive the world, they understand the power of words to renounce anything else. Wow. Wow. So that's why they want you to say that. Um, so when Jesus tells us, because uh, he is the word. So in the word of God, when it says that the power of life and death are in the tongue, it really is. Wow. Oh, this is so good. Like when scripture comes alive like that, where you are able to see the depth of it, that's amazing. Yeah. So this is very important to renounce things. And it's just that simple. Yeah. Of just out loud, not in your heart, not in your head, but out loud good. saying, I renounce this and I renounce any demons behind it. It's just that simple, bam, it's broken, and now they've lost their legal right to claim in a courtroom of heaven. Wow. So good. Uh, Which is also why it's dangerous to s ever say, and you really have to watch your words. Absolutely. You because do. you can, wow. That's so cool. when we lead people through deliverance, we hit a lot of, th we were very, very thorough yeah. with um, things. And we said, we specifically have them. I renounce any agreements that I have made with demons, will, willingly or unwillingly or unknowingly. Yeah. Because I want to make it clear to the, the listeners that de you might hear this and think, well, that doesn't seem fair that I'm, that I'm being demonized for something that happened to me like that where I was abused. Mm -hmm. Well, demons don't care. Satan doesn't care if you think it's fair. Right, right. He's operating within a realm that he's allowed to operate in. God actually allows him to do to operate in this system of government. But God also expects the believer to know things. Wow. I want you to think about a scripture in the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. He says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Wow. Wow. He's talking about God's people. Yep. God's people, now we know the world perishes for a lack of knowledge, but he says there, my people are perishing and dying because they don't know things they're supposed to know. Yeah, and I would also throw in, I could see that um, his people are also perishing without a knowledge of Jesus. That's exactly you know? right. And so that there's a big piece of that. That's too. exactly right. That could be thrown into the things that they don't know that they're supposed to know. But I mean, I think we can agree that no matter even where you're at on this particular topic of deliverance, that I think hopefully the listeners can agree that as Christians, we do not know everything we're supposed to know. Yes. Uh, yes. The word of God has been given to us and it's our job to dive in and get the revelation. Um, mm. I see, and I could preach for a long time on this, but but the church has been very lazy in their Christianity and just want to be spoon fed everything. Right, right. So, what can listeners do to start diving in? I mean, I would I would assume that many of the people listening are in the Word and are taking time, but but. It, I mean, like me five years ago, I had no knowledge of a lot of this stuff. Well, literally the Bible from beginning to end um, is filled with references to deliverance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the whole book of Judges about? Yeah. Deliverers. Ones who came to deliver God's people. Again, God's people. Yeah. The Old Testament is full of God's people needing deliverance. How much in the Old Testament did God's people worship false gods? Right, right. All the time. Yeah. It's still happening today. Can you please point out some really specific ways? Um, because, you know, I think I, yep. when I grew up as like, oh, maybe it's because you're spending money on this or it's your house or it's your car. But now I'm seeing actually there's like literally people are opening doors to the demonic and really worshiping so, things. Um, so like I said, a lot, of, a lot of what we deal with with believers comes from stuff that, that either happened to them before they were saved, traumatic okay. things 
or ancestral things. Yeah. Um, one of the big things in the United States that we deal with is Freemasonry. Yeah, that is. Um, a lot of people's dad or granddad was a Freemason, and they didn't. They thought it was harmless. Um, but Freemasonry, I don't care what you've heard, they're lying to you. It's it's of the devil. It's satanic. They worship Lucifer. Um, people, uh, I know though some will hear this and say that's not true. We no. have we have known people who are yes. very high ranking Masons who came out of it and said that that they tell you when you reach a certain degree that the altar you've been bowing at that we've told you was the altar of the great architect of the universe is Lucifer. Right. So um, it's a very demonic, very satanic very. organization. Um, so a lot of people um, deal with that when we do deliverance as believers. They'll have a, the demon of Lucifer or one of the other demons, a bad and Apollyon or Baphomet, one of the other ones that's associated with Freemasonry will manifest in a believer. And when we get to, when we ask the demon, "How did you get in?" and it'll say, "You know, four generations ago, the great great grandfather made a right. made an agreement at an altar." Uh, in a Masonic temple and dedicated to bloodlines for power and money. Wow. Or power and position. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that uh, was new to me is realizing that, uh, again, with the, with the authority that the demons, you know, are operating in or what, uh, as the law that they're operating in, they, they take of those four generations, yes. that, that vow, they're, yes. they're operating in that. And how that's what I think a lot of people don't realize it's like you do need to renounce anything that is of the Absolutely. bloodline because that could be something that you were just totally unaware of but are he's holding you like the enemy is holding you back from what god wants you to be that, walking in can i and i'd like to give you a scripture if i could Please. to back this up um so if you look at judges chapter six judges chapter six you find gideon and he is um, he's threshing his wheat down in a wine press, hiding from the enemy because um, the nation of Israel has found themselves to where every time they try to do anything, they plant any crops or they bring any livestock out, the Midianites come and take everything. So no matter how much they work and try to produce, wow. the enemy takes it. Um, so Gideon's in hiding from the enemy, and God comes to him and says, I want to, I want to send you to deliver your people. But he says, but Gideon, before I can use you, your father has an altar of Baal that he's built into his house, and I need you to tear it down. Yes. And so he goes, and he takes some people to tear down the altar of Baal, but he doesn't want to do it in the daytime because he's afraid. So he waits till night, and he tears down the altar of Baal. Now, when the light comes the next morning, and the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, see that Gideon has done this, they say, who's done this thing? Who's torn down this altar of Baal? We want to know because we want to stone him. Now, God's people are getting upset that Gideon went and tore down a false god's altar. Yeah. But who sticks up for Gideon in that story? I actually do His not father remember. does. The one who got the deliverance. Says, if Baal be God, let him uh, defend for himself. Now, this is a picture, I, I believe, of the church world that we're living in today, where God is saying, there's a whole lot of you I want to use, and I, I want to send you to, to help the body of Christ and to do something, but until you deal with the altars in your family's house, in your yes. father's house, and tear down these demonic false God altars, I can't use you. But if you'll do it, I will. But the church comes and says that deliverance isn't real. That deliverance isn't of God. Deliverance isn't for God's people. It's for the unbeliever. And they want to stone the deliverance people. Isn't that so But demonic? the ones <laughs> that are getting delivered are the ones that are sticking up for deliverance. Yes. Just like in that story. But God, God is, is revealing this. He's breathing onto the body of Christ this, this movement, I guess you'd say, of deliverance. He's, it's, it's always been biblical, but he's bringing it back at a new level because it's been forgotten. And this is all throughout the Old Testament. Right, Even right. in the book of Exodus, we see this with God's people. Uh, the Israelites are, are imprisoned for 400 years in slavery. We know that when we read that story, I think all of us can agree that you've read that story and know that Pharaoh represents Satan in that story. Right. Well, what does it say there in Exodus? It says that, that Pharaoh put taskmasters over God's people to make their life filled with rigor and full of hard work. Wow. Yeah. But somebody had to come and deliver them out from underneath those taskmasters. 
Totally. The blood of the Those lamb taskmasters ultimately. that worked under Pharaoh. Who is that? That's, that's a representation of demonic entities. Totally. I've put never Put over seen God's that. people to make their life hard. Yeah. And they had to get delivered. I mean, it's just full of deliverance. And then, of course, you get to the New Testament, and we see Jesus casting out demons everywhere he went. And many times, demons manifested in the synagogue. That is right. That is wild, right? And a lot of times, I don't think those people knew they had demons. They wouldn't have let them in if they did. Yep. That's exactly it. But when the presence of God showed up, when Jesus showed up, demons cried out, we know who you are. Yeah. You know? um, and we've actually seen that happen. We've yeah. actually had the experience of that in our ministry of going around people that are demonized and the demon just cries out, we, what are you doing here? Leave us alone. Yep. Because they recognize sons of God who walk in authority. Yeah. So what do you do when you respond to that? Or like, how do you respond to it that? It depends on the situation that it's in. A lot of times demons are just trying to interrupt and get attention. And of course, we never want to give them that. Right, right. So um, we usually just silence them if it's not a moment where we can actually deal with it. But if yeah. it is, we deal with it and cast them out. Yeah. Wow. What a... I don't know if you're okay with sharing with us... Um, when you said that you had four things yes. come out of you, four mm -hmm. demons, mm -hmm. uh, could you share some of those and how did you come to, what was that experience like maybe for people? Yeah, to so understand? Um, one of the uh, demons that I had cast out of me was actually a demon that calls itself Satan. Um, now, when I say this Satan and Lucifer, I want you to understand these is not the Satan or the Lucifer, okay? Um, these demons use these names just like they would. It's like a military ranking system. Okay. okay. So this is something that you understand when you dive deeper into deliverance ministry. But demons ha go by the names that you see in the Bible, but it's like it's like in a rank. So a Satan is not actually the Satan. There's one Satan and he's not everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. But it's like a rank that you would achieve like a colonel or, or a captain or whatever in the military. And so there's many Satans that go by and the demons that go by that name. And it's a rank. There's many Lucifers. There's many demons that go by the name Jezebel. There's many uh, Baphomets. There's many uh, Odin, Thors, Lokis, these, these Nordic demons. There's many of those. And it's a ranking system that they go by and how they identify to, to show a rank that they have in the demonic realm. Okay. So, but that was one demon that I had, and the way that it got in was uh, through, I was in a street gang called the Gangster Disciples for 20 years when I, before I got saved. So I was a drug dealer, I'd, I'd committed a lot of crimes, I took oaths and vows to this gang. Now, I had no idea that, I had no idea or thoughts that gangs was demonic in that sense. Yeah, me but, neither, but it makes sense. But when I actually, when I started thinking about it later, it makes total sense that that stuff is demonic because who do we think controls those things? And they do blood oaths, right? They do. So when there's a demon, what the demon that created that gang, because gangs are demonic, they're not good, yeah. they're not of God. Yeah. So when they influence the person that starts the gang and they begin to use him to control this whole thing, it's there's a demon that's being worshipped and being come into agreement wow. with by everyone who enters into covenant with that. So when I made those oaths to that gang, I made an oath with that demon, right. whether I knew it or not. Yeah. And they don't care whether you know. Exactly. They'd rather you not. <laughs> they, they don't want you to know. They want to be deceptive. Right. Um, so when I, what I had to do was renounce all of my affiliation with that gang, which... I never, no one ever told me I needed to do that. Yeah, exactly. When I, I got I've saved, never heard I did that in church. Matter of fact, when I grew up in church, they told me, Ben, when you get saved, everything you ever needed, you got it. Which is like, you did, but you need to break things off so that you can fully walk in it. I don't know how, what's the way to say that right? So what I would say is that when you get saved, everything you ever need is made available to you, but yes. it doesn't mean you got it. Hmm. Yeah. You have to receive it. You have to understand it. You have to come into the knowledge of it. God is not ever going to strong arm people and make them take these things. Yeah. He waits for you to want to do it. So I, that was something I didn't know about. Um, but once I came into the knowledge of it, I did it. And it got me free. And all of those things left me. And so all of those, um, that anger that I was talking about, yeah, that I could yeah. never get victory over, it totally left. 
So do you think that anger was, it was one of those things, yeah, linked to one of those things? Because it was the spirit that was connected with that gang that had this mentality of, I don't like to be questioned about stuff yeah. because I don't like, because in that culture, you don't want, no one's supposed to punk you out or yeah, make yeah, you yeah. feel, belittle you or anything. Right, right. And so if anybody challenged me in anything, that would rise up. Wow. So interesting. So, um, yeah, when that left, I've been never been more free in my life. I mean, at this I point in my that. walk with God, I can never say I've, I'm not, I've, I've never been as free as I feel right now. Yeah. And I literally walked out of that deliverance session that day and the, the, the colors look brighter. Yeah. The air smelled different. Um, I started to hear the voice of God more crystal clear. Now, I heard God before. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. But it's like taking something out of your ears. What it was like, what I'll tell you what it was like, is like, you remember how the radios used to, you have to, you have to tune them? Yep, yeah. When you get close to the channel, it right, would be right. static so much static. but you could hear the voice. Yeah. That's how it was. But when I got deliverance, it was like it was tuned completely in and there was no static. So it good. was just like crystal clear. I love that. And when you were having that experience, I know a lot of people say they kind of black out during that time mm -hmm. where they feel like something's controlling them, mm -hmm. but they don't have control of. Mm -hmm. What was that for you? It was like that for me. Um, it's not always like that for everybody. Some people are totally coherent through the whole thing and, mm. wow. and, and demons don't actually speak through them. They'll just, they'll speak to their mind and they'll say, be able to say, I'm hearing this name and I'm hearing this. And that's still an effective deliverance, right? Right. Because they're able to to hear, um, and we're able to uh, get the, to the root cause of the things yeah, that way. Yeah. But other times, people are on a different, higher level of demonization, right? Uh, with maybe stronger curses and things that have been there a very long time, and the demons do speak through them. So. I'm trying to think of, um, I've interrupted you so many times with all these little details. Thank you so much for bearing with That's me on okay. that. Um, where, um, where would be, where, what else do you want to equip well, listeners look, so with? So while we're, we're on this, let me just, I'll, I'll try, I'm trying to hit some things that I commonly get refuted with or, or questions asked to explain stuff. Um, what, one thing that they, that people come against our deliverance with a lot is they say, well, why do you, why do you talk to demons? You shouldn't be talking to demons. Um, well, first of all, I'll say Jesus did. He talked to them. Um, and we and people say, well, you shouldn't have conversations with demons. Well, we're not trying to have a conversation with a demon. I don't want to talk to any of them if I don't have to. Honestly. Exactly. But what we do do is interrogate demons. Yeah. It's an interrogation. Why? Because we want to get to the bottom, to the root of how they got in. Because then we can renounce how they got in right? and we can shut the door and we can put them out and they won't come back and they won't have any more legal right to have a curse. And what people need to understand is, is that this is not just about an individual. This is much bigger. This is about an entire bloodline. Demons don't want, they don't, sometimes they don't have a problem with loosing a person. But when you start messing around with breaking curses off the bloodline, they get very upset about that because you're talking about literally thousands of people that this has affected before this person and will affect after. Wow, I didn't even think about the people after that you're sparing them yes, from. Because wow. once you break that, the ones that haven't been born yet are now freed from that curse. Wow, yeah, that is... And demons do not want to let that go. And God can see time in all of it, yes. in all of it. So that's, that's incredible. That's why we, that's why we interrogate demons. Mm -hmm. We don't want to talk to them. I don't enjoy talking to demons, right? but we do it because we want to get to the bottom. Now it, people say, well, what, you just trust the Holy spirit. Yes, we do. And he can reveal us and give us words of knowledge and tell us all these things to where we don't have to talk to demons, but it doesn't always happen like that. Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> yes. If yes. I had all the answers, I wouldn't need God. <laughs> um, but, but if you, so if, you know, I don't mean this to sound arrogant, but if you think that you, you know, that you know all these things, then I would like to see you just go and cast demons out of everybody. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen that way. Right. You know, um, we have to do this. And the, the way that, um, that our ministry does it, 
I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm not even saying it's the best way. Yeah. But I do believe that our leader who's, who has came up with the system that we use, that, and I believe he heard it from God, it's a, the best method I've ever seen because it's so mm-hmm. thorough. Yeah. And a, and a person who's literally never done this before and is even a new believer and doesn't even know if they have the faith to do, cast out a demon can take this model and can get somebody free. Yes. And that's what we're going for. We're trying to get bring freedom to the body of Christ. I literally couldn't even tell. I probably have done, and this is not to brag, but just to tell you how God's moving, I've probably done uh, over 150 to 160 deliverances in the last 60 days. We literally, at our ministry, we do, we do deliverances with pastors all the time. Yes, yes, because that's what Satan wants to attack, right? If he yes. can take out the leader and, and the, the flock will be scattered. I mean... I don't think it's any secret for me to tell your listeners, I mean, that pastors struggle with pornography. Right. No, there's I mean, stats it's a, on that. It's a thing that's known. That's demonic. Not only that, but I heard that on some of those videos and tapes, they actually invite witches to curse those that watch it. This is, yes, they do. And that's, that is so creepy and so diabolical, but it makes sense when you see people so stuck in yes. it. So... How do people get free from that? I mean, I think I saw a section in the deliverance mm-hmm. guide about that. And so you're, you're breaking off those curses. We break those curses. So, uh, you know, if you've been addicted to pornography, we renounce pornography, we renounce uh, the spirit of lust, spirit of perversion. Um, a lot of times the addiction to pornography actually stems from something else. Okay. So, so a lot of times there was some kind of a sexual uh, trauma yeah. that happened to a person that has caused them to have an unhealthy appetite for sexual things. Interesting, yeah. And let me tell you, demons know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. This is why the Bible says to understand the schemes of the enemy. Right, yes. When, when he uses a person to sexually abuse a, 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 a child, and that he knows what that will produce. Right. And so he perpetuates these curses in people's lives to not only destroy that person's life, but hopefully a bloodline. So let's say someone is, is renouncing um, that, like, you know, the sexual sin or the pornography, lust, et cetera. You know, they read that, they experience deliverance. You know, how do you, how do you advise or help people to just never get anywhere close to that again? So this is, I'm glad you asked this question because this is something that, um, our, I've, I really respect our ministry and our leadership for, and actually, you know, Cherish was on, and she really is good at helping to walk people through the inner healing. And we have several others at the ministry that will help people to walk through the inner healing after deliverance. So the deliverance is not the end all be all. Yeah, yeah. It's one step in a process of discipleship. Yeah. Um, when Jesus said, go and make disciples, this is part of discipleship, casting out demons. Yep. People are demonized. When you go into these other countries to preach the gospel and they worship pagan gods, you better be ready to cast out demons and then disciple them after that. Right, so that they may follow all the words I commanded you. So we're getting into very more advanced and deeper stuff, but this is good. Um, Demons live in strongholds. This is why Paul says that that our warfare, our weapons tear down strongholds. Yes. That's where demons live, inside of a person. So the stronghold is what? could be lots of different things. Um, it could be a, a lot of times a stronghold is a pattern or a way of thinking about something. Yeah, yeah. So the demons come in, they build up this house that they live in. Like demons don't exist. <laughs> We're not here. <laughs> that is a religious-minded stronghold. Interesting. You know, um, or a, a tradition of man stronghold that gets people to think those yeah, kinds of yeah. things. Um, but they build this up and then they live inside this stronghold. So now once you've cast the demon out, great, the demon's gone, you've shut the door, but the stronghold's still there. And that has to be torn down. And this is what Paul talks about in the, the, that the transformation in your life in Romans 12, one and two says it comes with, the transformation comes with the renewing of your mind. You've got to tear down the strongholds. Yeah. They're where the demons used to live. It's, I I like to compare it to say like, you know, in in like a a war strategy, you know, if you're in war and you're fighting an enemy and they're occupied a a stronghold or a building and you drive them out, 
they don't usually leave the building standing. They'll go in and demolition that thing and take it down. So the enemy never comes back and right. occupies well, that again. Exactly. And that's the same principle that we do in discipleship. We want to tear down the stronghold right. where demons used to live. Because even just looking at that is a reminder of that, of what used to live there. Exactly, exactly. So we want no remnant of that in our life anymore. So that's how you can truly be free of pornography, of the spirit of lust, of, you know, anger, rage, these things, you know, a lot of these things that demonic stuff that happens even in believers is you got to tear down the stronghold afterwards too. Yeah. Because you can get deliverance and be free from the demon, but still struggle with some of the symptoms of it because they never dealt with the stronghold that was built up. I see. So you would advise people, they, they really need to get around people that can disciple them. Absolutely. And that can, can walk with them. In Absolutely. That. Absolutely. So that's a big part of your guys' ministry, right? Yes. True Purpose. So that's what we do at True Purpose Ministries. We, um, it's a drug and alcohol recovery program. So it's a faith-based. Uh, everything's based on the Bible and the, the life of Jesus Christ, the works yeah. of Jesus Christ. Um, we bring the men and women in to live with us, obviously separate facilities. Um, but we have men and women's programs. They come and they live for a year. And in that year, we just walk them through discipleship. So just about every single person that comes needs deliverance. Yeah, yeah. Because they've been heavily involved in the drug world. Yeah. Um, three out of four of our students have been sexually abused in some sort of manner in their life. Um, they've come from dysfunctional homes where drugs and abuse was prevalent in the homes. Uh, I mean, just so many things in their life that caused them to be demonized. And so when they come, they need deliverance. And after they get deliverance, we're able to walk with them for a good period of time to help them to truly be free from the things, that, the, the demonic patterns and thinking that they built up in their life. Wow. And ever since our ministry came into the knowledge of, see, we didn't always have deliverance. We didn't know about it. Yeah. No one had taught us this stuff. We, didn't, we lived in a culture for a long time where the church told you that Christians can't have demons. Yeah. But when we instituted deliverance, our ministry success skyrocketed. Right. It was like a missing link with these men and women. Yeah, yeah. It's just this. The, it was the missing power of them walking in the redeemed life because the enemy was still holding on to yes. all that stuff. That's right. That's right. And um, sabotaging their lives. Our uh, pastor Mike, our, our leader of our church, he he actually said something to me early on in, in learning about deliverance that just has stuck with me. And he said, Ben, you can't disciple a demon. Wow. And I thought, that is a very true statement. And when a person's demonized, there's just areas of their life they're not going to receive discipleship because the demon will not let them. Wow, that's really powerful because I, can, I feel like I've been in those situations. It leads me to a desperation because I feel like no matter what I try to help someone, that or a particular person it's mm -hmm. like they just don't seem to be listening and keep falling into the same patterns and it's mm -hmm. just like i can't help them that's right wow that's exactly right and you know i'd like to just i know we've gone a long time but i'd that's like good. to propose a question to the listeners and and this may upset some people but i really want them to think about this for those of you who are having a problem understanding this or thinking that why would deliverance be for saved people have you ever really asked yourself, why would you cast a demon out of an unbeliever? Why would you do it? Yeah, I mean, I personally, I, this is something I actually struggle with nowadays because when Jesus talks about how the demon's going to go out and bring in seven more That's of right. his friends, I've definitely, like, that is a very real here in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And so I actually really struggle with that, which is why I actually like kind of before casting out demons, I really want them to know Jesus. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you said that because I, 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 I won't cast a demon out of an unbeliever unless 
it's in the situation of presenting them with you for like to cast it out so they can receive yeah. Jesus. If the demon is actually there to preventing them from receiving Jesus, but the person wants to receive Jesus, yeah. then I will cast out the demon. Jesus can come in and save them. And then they won't get redemonized because now Jesus is there. Right, right. Well, and especially here in Cambodia, there's definitely an awareness of that. That's why you see all of those spirit houses in front of their houses. Mm -hmm. Cause like we need some sort of spirit in here that's because right. if we don't have a spirit that's helping us we're gonna have a lot of harmful spirits that's exactly right so very interesting and but then also i want to um clarify because cherish was just talking about how you know she would have these words of knowledge and pray for people and mm -hmm. you know they, people are being mm -hmm. liberated from things so uh, but it you know it sounds like sometimes the healing is different than the demonic presence mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so how do you it's, um as far as like sometimes it's the healing is not from a demon the, yeah, or the yeah, sickness yeah. isn't from a demon sometimes. yeah yeah so um, so, I'll, okay, so I'll use the example of Jesus um, came to a woman who had, who was said, it says she was all bent over and can right. no way straighten up for 18 years. And it says she had a spirit of infirmity. Yes. Yes. It wasn't just an infirmity. It was a spirit of infirmity. So there we understand that there is demons that cause sickness yeah, yeah. and diseases and infirmity. Now, if you want to, if you don't want to grasp at straws or, or be technical, all sickness and disease comes from the enemy because no... Mm the world wasn't created by God to have any of that until sin and Satan brought that through, through death uh, and the curse of sin. Okay. Yeah. So all of it goes back to the enemy, but there is specific demons that bring sickness and disease on people, but not all of it is right. Right. Not all of it is. Some of it's just from living in the fallen world. It's not specifically a demon causing it. As we come into wrapping up, what are some things that you just really want to make sure that the audience um, is left with? I would say one thing I would say is that if, if this has tugged on your heart today or, you know, if you have felt the Holy Spirit saying this is this seems like this might be true to yeah. me um, to go back and start reading your Bible with take off the traditional lenses that you've normally read it with. pray a, pray against yes. whatever is maybe yes. blinding you because that could be demonic. Absolutely. Um, I can't tell you how many pastors that I've done deliverance on that have stood from the pulpit and preached against deliverance and they've had church members amening them and both sides were demonized. Right, right. The one preaching against it was <laughs> was a demon and the ones cheering it on. Of course, was, of course, because they're all, it's all in it together. So, so, so it definitely is a, a scheme of the enemy inside of the body of Christ to keep us out of the truth. We know the word of God says that in the days we're living in, which I believe that we're in these last yeah, days, right? Definitely. It says that doctrines of demons will be preached. Wow. Doctrines of demons. Wow. Yes. And the How demons, are demons are preaching doctrines. And they're so legalistic, right? Yeah. So that's also kind of another thing that kind of lends itself to that doctrine idea. So there has to be people in the church that are demonized if they're preaching doctrines of demons. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I would also want to tell you... I, um, that one thing the enemy likes to do is bring shame upon you for this. Um, a whole lot of people hearing this right now um, that might be in ministry or might be have been a Christian a while or trying to do stuff for the Lord, or, or maybe you're not, maybe you just work a normal job, but you're a Christian, that when you hear this, it feels some kind of a shame, like, man, maybe I do need deliverance, but that just makes me feel embarrassed to think that I have a demon. Yeah. Don't let the enemy do that to you. Right, that right. is a demonic, that's a demonic attack right there trying to bring shame and guilt on you. And Jesus is not uh, uh, upset with you. Uh, he literally said that this is the children's bread. Mm. This belongs to yes. you. I came to do this for you. I shed my blood to take authority over the demonic realm, the kingdom of darkness. It says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of Satan. So he, this belongs to you. It's yours. Don't be embarrassed of it. So you good. don't have to be embarrassed about uh, having some kind of a demonic attack on your life any more than you do about the sin that you've already been forgiven for. Yeah. There's no condemnation in those who are in Christ. Jesus understands the schemes of the enemy. He understands that demonic, that demons did these things to you and to your bloodlines to demonize you. And he wants to set you free. Amen. So there's no shame. Yes. Don't let that hold you back from getting it. And a lot of pastors deal with this because they're like, I'm the pastor. I can't be let anyone know that I had to get deliverance. Right. That's the enemy. Yep. 
He wants to stop you from walking in your destiny. Do not let him do that to you. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you from experience. You're yeah. hearing this from a pastor who's coming on the air on a podcast, not knowing how many people even hear this, saying, I had to have that. Yeah. But it set me free in my ministry to be more effective than I've ever been able to be. Praise God. I probably wouldn't even be here in Cambodia right now, being able to do what I'm doing had I not been willing to go through that. Yes. It would have held me back from experiencing my destiny in Jesus. This is something that Christians have to understand. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Yeah, I know. Amen. And it's a whole different way of seeing that verse. It's a spirit. It is. Behind every single thing that we wrestle against, it's always demonic. Now, I'm not saying everybody's yeah. demonized. I'm saying, but everything, whenever someone's coming at you and you're having an issue with somebody, it's never them. Right, right. It's always something behind that that's com- causing that. That is that is so true. And I've seen that over and over again because there would be something there and I'm just like, that doesn't even seem like you. No. What is going on? Because it's not. So, okay, if I have the something situation like that, I guess I should just be praying against that. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. I don't, I don't know what else to do other than praying for them. Maybe even in the moment, hey, let's pray together. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, because I've definitely seen and experienced that in Cambodia more than other places. And actually. maybe, and I'm not saying you start calling demons out, right? Right. right exactly. But maybe when they're not around, you do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. If you start recognizing something, the Holy Spirit starts showing you something. Especially because he will, if you start specifically praying, show me what spirit that is. Yes. And if he shows you, when they're not around, start saying, I take authority over that spirit and just start doing it. And you'll see a change because you have that authority. Two things. One, just on a practical note. If you, or I would say, let's say I am starting to feel some of these things creep in, Mm -hmm. whether it's lust, whether Mm -hmm. it's anger, whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it in the moment? I feel like I want to like spiritually jujitsu that mm-hmm. thing and start mm-hmm. praying against that. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you do it? So you do you do do that. You do want to pray, but what you got to do is renounce everything in your life that you could have thought would have let that in. That's good. So yes. if you're dealing renounce with lust, repent. okay? that's what repentance means, right? Time, yeah. So renounce and repent. Mm-hmm. So if if say let's use lust. If you're feeling lust, start asking, say, okay, what did I, did, did I do something to let this in? That's so so good. then Holy Spirit, yes. show me. Yes. Ask the um, Holy Spirit for guidance. So then maybe the Holy Spirit say, you know, you watched that movie the other night and there was a sex scene and there was nudity and you watched it and didn't turn the channel yeah. and that let something in. Yeah. So then you, you let say, that thought go farther and farther down the track where a, you could have an open it. door. Yep. Now a spirit of lust came because you opened the door and you... You did. You could have shut it, but you chose not to. Yes. So you willingly let it come. The Lord will always give a way out of temptation, Correct. right? And so it's you going back to that, and you have to take ownership of mm-hmm. I let that in. Yes. Now I'm not saying that every time you do that, that you're always going to get a demon, but you right. could. Yeah, yeah. It's possible. Um, so just renounce that. Say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I renounce watching that sex scene and that movie that I shouldn't have. And I, re- I repent, Holy Spirit, for watching. I repent for not listening to your conviction when, when it, and ignoring that in the moment when you told me not to watch it. I repent from that. And I renounce any demon or any spirit of lust that came in from that in the name of Jesus. That's as simple as that. Amen. And then you can go, go so far as to confront it. I mean, look in the mirror and say, lust, if you're there, I get to attention right now in the name of Jesus. And if it comes up, Cast it out. Say, I command you to leave my life right now in the name of Jesus. I've renounced you. I've repented. And you have no legal right to be in my life. Yeah. Good. Wow. Love it. And my final question was, what are your final words for the uh, listeners? I just want to encourage everybody to understand that, uh, to start asking and praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you. Um, don't take my word for it. Don't just listen to me and say, okay, that guy on the podcast said that deliverance is the children's bread, but go and search it out in the scripture for yourself. Yeah, it's all over. We should there, like always you said. be doing this. We should never sit in any church or or any or any sermon, you know, podcast or anything, and just take people's word for it. We need to be searching the scripture for ourselves yeah. so that we're not deceived. Yes, because there's a lot of people out there yes. that are. Pre-
preaching deceiving things and the doctrines of demons are very alive and well and we need to make sure that we know the word of god for ourselves so don't I, I it does not offend me if you don't necessarily believe what i'm saying i want you to go and look search it out in the scripture for yourself and let the holy spirit show you just like jesus said to peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you peter but my father in heaven we all need to have those revelations yes. of the truth from the father not from man yes and it's if you'll go and you'll search it out and you'll do it with a humble heart and an open heart to say god i want to take off all my traditional lenses i want to take off the lenses of 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 religion and and, and maybe denominations and yeah. all these different things that that put lenses on us and say I want to take all those off, Holy Spirit, remove those from my eyes and let me read your scripture the way that you would have me to read it, to see the truth that you want me to know and read it that way. And I believe you'll see in there that, that the things that we've been talking about today are the heart of Jesus. Praise God. Ben, it's been such a blessing having Amen. you on. Thank you. You're welcome. If you enjoyed the episode or have further questions, then the comment section is a perfect place to put those. If you were like me and this is new to you and you do want that biblical-based understanding of the spiritual realities around you, check out Michael Heiser's The Unseen Realm. It's a book, you can get it as an ebook. You can also check out the video summary on his YouTube channel. I also highly would recommend the video that Michael Heiser did specifically on demons. Please do go forth in the power of Christ. Do read your Bible and understand things for yourself. I do not want this episode to inspire fear, but rather faith that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is so much more powerful than the things you're struggling with, the things that are coming against you. I pray that this empowers you to step forward in God's calling for your life, wherever and whatever that may be. Peace.